Hi, this is Eric Vega with GoEngineer. In this video, I want to go over how to set up an interference fit and how to add sequential loads so we can find the stress on a pre-stressed C-clip during operational loads. To run the study, I'll use the Structural Scenario app. I'll create an initial static step where I'll create the interference fit for the C-clip to be expanded and match the inner diameter of the groove. We will then add step two. We'll assign a displacement for the clip and the inner tube to make contact with the outer tube. And last, once everything is in contact, we'll add a pressure to the outer face of the inner tube to find the resulting stresses on the already pre-stressed C-clip. We'll start by opening up the part file. This C-clip physical product already contains an FEM that was utilized in another study. This means we don't have to spend time creating a new FEM for this study. To start, I'll click the compass on the upper left and then choose Structural Scenario Creation. We'll use the assistant as a guide. We'll start with setup. We need to link this study to that existing FEM. I'll select it and then click OK. We can now define the first step. This is going to be the interference, so I'll label it so, and I'll set an initial time increment of 0.1. When I click parts, this loads the model creation app, which brings forward that FEM within the physical product. You'll notice we actually have some connections. If we look at the engineering connections here, there's been a coupling created with all of the internal faces of the C-clip in this assembly. We'll move to interactions and then create a contact property. This will allow us to set a friction coefficient of 0.1 for all surfaces that end up making contact. Next, we'll create the general contact that will utilize that contact property that we just barely created. General contact is what tells the solver that every phase out there, it's meant to be recognized as no penetration. To create the contact interference, First, we need to create a surface-based contact. We can use it from the action bar or from the assistant. So it's a little easier to select the faces. I want to use the visualization management tool to hide the mesh. Now I'm going to use the F7 key on my keyboard to hide the inner tube body and select both of the faces that are part of this clip. I'll push F8 to bring all bodies in. And for my secondary selection, I'll hide the C-clip and select the faces of the groove. Before I accept, I wanted to take into account the friction coefficient I defined, so instead of using the default, I'm going to go for the contact property I created. Now we'll go to contact interference and tell it to use that surface-based contact. We're going to click onto the dropdown, choose same feature, and select that contact. We'll leave the selection as automatic shrink fit. The next step is restraints. We're going to clamp the back of the outer tube, show all solids by pushing F8, and start creating fixed displacement for our parts. To be able to do sequential loading, you'll have to create your restraints strategically. We'll need to turn off some of these through the rest of the steps. To restrain the inner tube, I want to select these two outer faces and lock in the X and Y direction of motion, and I'll name it inner radial. I'm going to create the new restraint on the Z direction as a separate item so that I can turn it off independently in the following step. Now for the C-clip, if I were to create a fixed displacement for these two faces in the X, Y direction, I would actually be preventing the clip from being expanded to fit into the groove. This would interfere with the contact interference boundary condition. So instead, what I'll do is I'll utilize that coupling that connects all the inner faces of the C-clip into one point. I'll tell this one point coupling to be locked in rotation around the Z and add another fixed displacement to the same coupling for a movement in the Z axis. We are done with the first step, and it's good practice to run it 
to make sure that your setup is correct before we start adding the following steps. When this study finishes running, we'll add the next two steps and use the feature manager to activate or deactivate individual restraints for the rest of my study. Now that we know our study setup is correct, let's go back to the scenario and start adding the following steps. We'll go into procedures, click static step to create the next step. Do an initial time increment of one and you notice how inside the structural analysis case, we'll have step one with interference and step two. I'll click OK. And I'll go into my feature manager. What we're going to be doing to be able to move my inner tube with C clip into the outer tube is I'll need to remove the fixed displacement of translation on the inner tube for the second step. I'll right click the option under static step two and choose to remove this fixed displacement just for this step alone. We'll do the same for the translation of the clip. Otherwise, the applied displacement we're about to add would not be able to converge. I'll go to loads, apply translations, and then choose the two faces of the inner tube and tell them to move a distance that I know will make contact against the outer face of the outer tube. If I look at my feature manager, we can ensure that creating the apply translation in the second step automatically removed it from the first one. Once we make contact, we want to add the next step. I will also use 0.1 for the initial increment, where we'll add a pressure to that outer face. And the last step is to go into the feature manager and deactivate the apply translation on step three so we can push further against the outer tube on the third step. We'll close the feature manager and run the study. If we look at the simulation status window, here we can see the process of each one of the steps independently. Under iterations, you'll see the initial step running through into convergence, the second, and then the third step. To view the results for each independent step, we can click the dropdown and select it. Let's create a cut plot so that we can see the results a little more clearly. We can do this by clicking on the plot, choosing the section tool, and picking the proper orientation. When we zoom into the bottom, we can see how the stresses are affecting the C-clip as it sits properly in the groove. For the second step, as we move through the plot time steps, we can see how contact is eventually reached. And on the third step, we can see how the pressure applied on the inner tube transfers onto the outer tube via the C-clip. This has been Eric Vega with Go Engineer. Stay tuned for more videos on how to use the Simulia tools in the 3D Experience platform.